This is Leia Bolo from Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, major in Natural Resource Management from the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, Cagayan de Oro Campus. So our topic for today is all about the groundwater vulnerability assessment using modified hydrological drastic model in Makawayan City, Bulacan, Philippines. So this paper is conducted by Mr. Francis June Makalam, Ms. Marisa Sobri Misana, Ms. Patricia Ann Sanchez, and Ms. Simplicia Pasikula. Before we start, let's just have an objective. First, to show areas of the highest potential for groundwater pollution based on hydrogeological conditions and human impact. Second, to use the drastic system together with the geologic software to identify potential areas in Mikawayan City where groundwater is vulnerable to pollution. Third, to assist in the formulation of policies related to groundwater research management and protection in Mikawayan City. According to Dixon, in 2005, groundwater is a very important natural resource and can be thought of as a second source of water supply for rural areas faced with limited accessible surface water or community water pipeline. And according to Tuarangkavi and Kalawaraki, in 2006, groundwater is the main source utilized consistently in industry, exchange, and other business, and in particular for drinking. The presence of hard rock aquifers in some countries can be problematic as some of these aquifer systems have low storage and yields leading to greater pollutant vulnerability through crack and fracture flows. The city of Mekowayan is bordered by the towns of Santa Maria, San Jose del Monte, Marilao, and Ubando in the province of Bulacan and city of Valenzuela. It encompasses an aggregate area of 3,210 hectares, presently composed of 26 barangays, representing a 1.17% of the total land area of the province of Bulacan. The Marilao, Mekawayan, and Ubando River systems in the province of Bulacan, Philippines is home to hundreds of thousands of people and numerous industries such as leather tanning, gold smelting, and recycling of lead acid batteries. And according to Mendoza et al. in 2012, most of these industries dump their untreated wastewater into the river that eventually contaminate the area's groundwater. As a recent study conducted by the National Water Resource Board in 2018, Mekawayan City is one of the key urban centers in the Philippines experiencing water stress due to the increasing water demand. Furthermore, the city's groundwater supply is getting, getting depleted. According to a 2009 study done by the Institute of Philippine of Ateneo de Manila University, and aside from indicating that the groundwater table has gone down, the study also found out that that seawater had intruded into the city's aquifers. These findings were affirmed by another study made by the National Water Resource Board in collaboration with ADMU's Economic Department. The groundwater sector of Mekawayan City is confronted with four interrelated problems, namely the saltwater intrusion, unregulated extraction, limited knowledge on water quality, and forecasted deficit. These problems are exacerbated by the absence of an institution that will oversee the proper monitoring and management of the water resources and the forecasted deficit in groundwater availability. Therefore, the need to study the vulnerability of groundwater resource of Mekawayan City is important. This is to develop a groundwater vulnerability index in the area and a groundwater vulnerability map for the Mekawayan groundwater resources. Results can aid in policy making and planning in order to balance industrial developments and groundwater resource integrity for human well-being, as well as in the implementation of mitigation measures to attain sustainable management of groundwater resources. The methods include a structured survey method, ocular inspection, and generation of maps using geographical information system. And for the method that was used in mapping the groundwater, vulnerability was the drastic method. And there are seven hydrological parameters such as the depth to water table, net recharge, aquifer media, soil media, topography, impact of the dose zone, hydraulic conductivity, and land cover. 
Each parameter is given weight and rating value ranging from 1 to 10 based on its significance or importance in affecting contamination of water that were determined by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency or the U.S. EPA. Most of the data used in this study are readily available and are obtained from several government and non-government institutions. These maps should be ensured that their spatial reference is set to WGS 1984 UTM Zone 51N in order to avoid conflicts of overlaying in ArcGIS. So in results and discussion, following the methodological application, thematic map of each parameter and groundwater vulnerability map were developed to evaluate groundwater deterioration vulnerability. In depth to groundwater, it is noticeable that barangays Liputan, parts of Malahakan and Lidong were considered to be the most vulnerable in terms of depth to groundwater table. The shallower the water depth, the more vulnerable the aquifer is to pollution, and vice versa. The depth to water is also important because it provides the maximum opportunity for oxidation by atmospheric oxygen and related to the effect of the Vados zone. And in groundwater vulnerability map of Megawayan City, it is also noticeable that some northeastern portion of the city is consistently more, more vulnerable than its southern counterpart. These vulnerable areas found to be the built-up areas since still many of the business establishment as well as residential areas do not have proper sewerage system or are not connected to the sewerage facility of the city. And in deep wells, the location of the inventory wells were also plotted into the vulnerability map to spot which among the wells were vulnerable to contamination. The overlay showed that most of the existing wells used by the local people, either for drinking, washing, and other domestic cores, were located in highly vulnerable areas as, so, as shown in Figure 10. In conclusion and recommendation, the study has shown the effectiveness of the combined use of the DRASTEC model and GIS in assessing groundwater contamination vulnerability. The GIS technology has provided an efficient environment for analysis and high capabilities of handling spatial, spatial data in the study area. This study has also demonstrated the use of the model in a small setting in the Philippines. This method with a little refinement can be used throughout the country to create new groundwater vulnerability map if none exists. The result could be used for planning and groundwater management. Special attention should be made to the areas having moderate to high contamination vulnerability potential. In order to validate and improve the results, the use of other methods such as GOD and NTAX are recommended for comparison and validation of vulnerability vulnerability index. The use of sensitivity analysis could determine if the parameters are sensitive. Additional data could be collected in the field to improve and validate the result. And that would be all. Thank you.